In the House of Representatives today, at TIP Fox Nation, Republican Congressman John Shimkus was lecturing the EPA Administrator, Lisa Jackson, the former EPA head or the equivalent thereof under the former failed governor of New Jersey, Corzine. We get a lot of audio and video of members of Congress on the floor or in committee, but this was really good. This was really good. So we, we give a hat tip to Shimkus, and this affects you. Cut two, go. This hearing is, is about jobs and the effects of jobs, and I think we can make an argument on carbon dioxide not being a criteria pollutant under the Clean Air Act, and that we've gone around the legislative ability by using the courts and using regulatory authority to regulate something that should not be regulated. But let's assume you all are successful. I have in front of me um, a power plant that's being built, 1,600 megawatts. If we r mandate them to reduce carbon dioxide emittance by 60%, what amount of the energy that they produce will have to be used to capture that carbon? Do you know what that is? Uh, sir, I, I'm sure you were going to give it's us your preferred It's 22% of the, of the energy that they are going to put on the grid will now have to go to capture. If they go to 85%, you know how much energy that would require? 30% of what they were going to put on the grid to sell would have to. Do you believe in the law of supply and demand? Do, do I believe in the law of the supply economic and demand? Economic supply 101? and demand. It's not a tenet of trade, sir. It is a no, do you believe economic it? model, and I was trained in it. Do you believe it? Yes, I believe that if generally. you constrain a product and there's a high demand, that costs go up? It depends on the elasticity of the cost curves. Oh, and I would say that here's an example of us having power on the grid that this regulation is now going to constrain because we're going to have to use energy to capture carbon, which is not energy we can put on the grid, so the people who are going to buy this have to buy what? Higher power. You know what the capital expense for this power plant is if they're going to uh, build new facilities to capture carbon. What is the new capital expense at 60 percent? It's $1.8 billion they will have to. If it's 85 percent, their capital expense, this is new spending, $2.3 billion. Sir, under th their next, you know where they have to go to, to pipe the carbon capture and sequestration? How far? We think, we think the closest might be 70 miles. Who's going to pay for the pipeline? And then how big a sequester facility has to be there? The point is, this regulation is going to skyrocket electricity costs, which will destroy jobs. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sir, Thank sir, may you, I Mr. respond to just a few things for the record? The first sure. is under the Clean Air Act, which is a public health Mr. Chairman, I would like statute. to, if she would yield, I, I would address this the same way that Chairman Waxman addressed Senator Inhofe and not allowing him. So if my colleagues on the other side want to give her time, they should do it on their time. Very good point. Now, what he said couldn't be clear. These are the consequences of this kind of regulation to you, to you, the consumer, based on a fraud that carbon dioxide is a pollutant. Now let's rewind briefly on how we got here. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts and some of the other states led by leftists, including Connecticut, they went to court to force the EPA to define carbon dioxide as a pollutant. California, too. They conspired with the leftists over there at EPA. They conspired with these left-wing environmental groups to bring a lawsuit because they wanted a court to do what Congress refused to do. They wanted a court to do what the EPA up until that time refused to do, which was to claim that carbon dioxide was an air pollutant even though the EPA had concluded at the time it was not. And so they bring litigation. You see, whenever they can't win at the ballot box, they go to court. And if they can't win in court, they go to the bureaucracy. But they never take no as an answer. Well, they got their case in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. And John Paul Stevens, writing for a five to four majority, he said, look, we're not going to say whether or not carbon dioxide should be regulated or not. But we do believe it falls within the federal statute, should the EPA wish to regulate it. And he knew they would, as did the other four justices. This is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you have these result-oriented activists on the court. This is why you got to worry about the health care litigation. So it goes back to the EPA. In come the Obama drones. They take over, of course, the EPA. 
And they reverse every prior administration, and they see they have a Supreme Court ruling. A Supreme Court ruling that says if they want to regulate carbon dioxide under existing law, passed in the 1970s, they're free to do it. So what do they do? That's what they do, as quickly as they can. And what Congressman Shimkus, Republican of Illinois, is pointing out is, do you, do you see the expense involved here? You get a new power plant that comes online. 22 to 30 percent of the power it creates has to be used, not by you, the consumer, but to comply with these regulations. In addition to that, they have to expend an enormous amount of money to capture new money, carbon dioxide, and not only capture it, but pump it through a pipeline, 60 miles worth of pipeline, to some other location. And for what? For nothing. On fraudulent science. On uh, climate change science. And they're pumping carbon dioxide. Now this is amazing to me. That's what you exhale, as you know. You inhale oxygen, you exhale carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is used by plants through photosynthesis to create oxygen. We all learned this in third grade in science class. Meanwhile, we're going to pump, pump whatever, through this pipeline, carbon dioxide created by this power plant, based on false evidence, false information, coming out of the U.N., coming out of Britain, and that's why it's going to kill jobs. It's going to kill jobs, and it's going to drive the cost of electricity through the roof. Now, at the same time that we're imposing these enormous costs on these utilities, we are closing down coal mines. And those coal mines that exist, we're imposing enormous costs, additional costs, on them. So we're going to reduce the supply of coal available to go to these power plants to create electricity on top of all the costs that those utilities, those power plants, are going to have to bear to deal with these EPA regulations, which are based on a lie that the Supreme Court created and a scientific lie. Oxymoronic, but you get the point. Hard-working people are going to be out of work. Hard-working people are going to pay a fortune for electricity. That's why that clip was so crucial. And she didn't give a damn. I watched this and her face and her response condescending and arrogant like so what who cares what you think you can't stop me unelected people given power by other unelected people power they could not get through congress even when the democrats controlled both branches or both uh, chambers that's electricity and coal let's move to oil over at the interior department they have effectively shut down deep sea drilling and so those rigs moved to other countries other places it's creating dislocations, and it's, it's reducing supply. They're making it incredibly difficult to drill in Alaska. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't drill more in the Gulf and we don't drill in Alaska, where are we going to go? Those are two of the places, that, among the two places, that are the, the most uh, important to us. North Dakota, they're finding a hell of a lot more oil. Can't wait to see how that's regulated. We have an enormous amount of oil shale potential throughout the Rocky Mountain area. They're making it incredibly difficult to access that and to build the technologies to make it cost-effective. See, our government is making progress, economic progress, wealth creation, job creation, more and more and more difficult. So we're regressing now. We're regressing. An economy cannot grow, it cannot expand if we're cutting off its lifeblood. Some of you union guys who work the steel mills and the coal mines and the oil fields, who are listening to me, who are driving trucks, who work on assembly lines. You really do need to pay attention, not to the propaganda handed to you by your union leaders, but to what's going on out there. If we cut off our ability to access and to produce for useful purposes our natural resources, it's not the rich who are going to be affected the most. It's the wide swath of our population. It's going to be the people who dirty their hands. That's who's going to be affected the most. When Obama says, I haven't raised taxes, first of all, that's a flat-out lie, and we talked about that yesterday. But he's driving up the cost of fuel, he's driving up the cost of electricity, he's driving up the cost of food. You get a flat tire, you go to get a, a, a tire, you're driving up the cost of tires. All the, all the uh, uh, oil, rubber, and activity that's involved in making a, a tire, transporting it, getting it to Sears or Pep Boys, wherever you get your tires, it drives up the cost. So we have a government that, 
in a massive bureaucracy that's putting these these smothering regulations and rules in place, and the head of the EPA is laughing at this congressman, in essence. And by the way, when you watch her, she's cold, man. She is cold. She doesn't care. And what will they do when they give us the example of the little old lady living in New Hampshire who can't afford fuel? They'll be saying we need to expand and spend more on our heating program. Heating program. So we need to tax A to give money to B to pay for their fuel, which the people who are taxing us, the people who are creating these programs, have driven through the roof to begin with. It is a horrific and destructive cycle. Now, we don't need a new heating program. We don't need an expanded heating program. We need to unleash our genius, our inventiveness, and stop trying to control it and destroy it. That's what we need to do. We'll be right back. 